I just realized that if my sweater is covering the bee, it looks like oldly go. And if that's not like a metaphor for my life, I don't really know what it is. Hi friends, it's Paisley and Glue. And today we are going to talk about how to make a clean binding on a costume piece. Uh, oftentimes in cosplay and costuming, a character design, especially if it's an animated character or a comic book character, is going to call for some sort of very graphic angular design like this. And there uh, are several different ways to do this. You can use uh, bias binding, which I do all the time, especially on curves. That's still going to be the best way to do it because the bias takes the curve so well. Uh, you can also just apply the graphic piece to the edge and then uh, instead of having it wrap around the edge you can just line the whole piece and that totally works too uh, depending on if you want to see that seam right at the edge if it's a contrasting fabric that might not be the best choice for you if you want to see the color wrap around the edge like it does on this one another way to do it which we're going to talk about today is to use an actual shaped binding piece that you make a special pattern for based on the edge of your garment pattern piece. And it's gonna wrap cleanly around the edge. There's gonna be no seams on the front side and minimal seams on the back side. And you will get a nice, clean, finished, bound edge. So let's get started. So this is our sample piece that we are going to be working on today. And you can see that I've drawn on where I want my binding to end up. So I can kind of see that line. Uh, I would recommend that you make a separate pattern for this piece that includes seam allowance. And that's just because it's hard to remember. You're gonna double it up and then you need to add seam allowance and all that business. So let's just add it to a nice clean pattern. And we'll just be happier in the long run. So I'm tracing my edge, it's half an inch. So get that gets me to the same shape as what this is right now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a quarter inch seam allowance. So that gives us a seam allowance on that side of the binding. Now we need to add another half an inch to the outside of the binding plus another quarter inch for a seam allowance and turn under for the back side. So I can go ahead and just add the full three quarters of an inch. Okay, so here's my pattern piece that includes all seam allowances. I'm gonna cut this out. So here is my trim pattern piece. So we can see that lays over the edge, includes our seam allowance, our wrap around, plus the seam allowance on the other side. So now I'm gonna go ahead and trace my sample piece onto this fabric. This is like a medium weight twill, so it's got a nice weight to it. This technique works well when your backing fabric at least has a little bit of beefiness to it. So here is our piece. I am not going to add seam allowance to the edge because ultimately we're going to wrap our binding fabric around the edge and so you don't actually want any seam allowance added. It's really hard to remember not to add seam allowance to a hem. I have a hard time with that. But you'll just have to cut it off later if you do add it. I need a new blade for this rotary cutter. Okay, so here's our sample piece backing. 
And then the last thing I'm going to do is, um, obviously if you were making this into a garment, you'd probably have a left and a right side, so you cut out the same thing on the other side. On the back side of this, I am going to draw on my stitch line. And you could do this with something that will disappear with heat or water or time. I'm using pencil because it's the easiest for you to see right now. And later on, the binding should cover this up. Uh, but if you use something that will disappear, it will uh, be a little bit easier later for you. You can also choose to uh, do a thread trace, either by hand or by machine, to mark that line. And then that's even easier to take out later. Okay, so that's done. That could be set aside. Okay, so now we are ready to cut out our binding piece. And I'm actually going to flip this over so it's the wrong side. Again, if you were making something, you probably have a left and a right side. So if you just mirror, then you would ultimately have the right things. But because I am only making one of these, we're gonna flip this over. So this is the back. We're gonna trace around the edge. like so. And remember this top edge has a quarter inch seam allowance on it. So before this is cut out and becomes easier and or uh, before this is cut out and becomes much more woodgy, I am gonna mark that quarter inch seam allowance on that inside edge. This technique is not the best for conserving fabric absolutely um, if you're making left and right sides and if your fabric doesn't have a right or a wrong side to your fabric you can often nest your pieces so that they you're wasting as little fabric as possible but just be warned that you might need to buy some extra yardage more than you think definitely more than if you're making um, bias tape binding because that doesn't take hardly any any yardage at all so now we can see that those pieces are ultimately going to be sewn together. Okay, to the sewing machine we go. All right, so we've got our two pieces and we can start stitching these on. So the first thing you're gonna do is, we, is realize that we need to deal with all three of these angles separately. So let's start with this one. So we're gonna take our pin. We are going to place the pin right in the corner that we already marked of our binding fabric. We're gonna flip this over. We're gonna find that same corner that we marked on the backing fabric. And we're gonna make sure that's all lined up. The pin's going straight down and pin that into place. And now we can use pins through our line on this side, through the line on the back side to make sure that our stitch line is going to be perfectly straight. And feel free to use as many pins as you want. So I've got my line pinned, I've got my pin that ends at the corner, and my pins on the back correspond to my line that I've drawn on the back side. To the machine, I'm using white thread just so you can see what I'm doing. Obviously you'd want to use red thread for this. When you get to the corner, slow down a little bit and you're going to come right to that corner. You can wiggle your machine needle down into place to make sure that it goes right where that pin is. Down once, do our back stitch, and trim our threads. 
So we can see that that stitch line goes right to the corner there and right to the corner on the back side. Next step is if you try to turn this to stitch around the edge, you can see that you can see that this corner of the trim is keeping us from turning that. So we're going to take a very sharp pair of scissors and we're going to carefully clip right to the corner. of the binding and that allows us to turn our binding to follow the next angle and we're simply going to pin in the same manner that we did before and you just want to make sure that you don't have a weird fold here that you're pulling that fabric taut around that corner Once again, I'm going to put this into the corner of that trim there, find my corner on the back side, and pin it into place. Okay, and now we're ready to stitch just like we did. Now when you are stitching here, you need to sort of finagle this fold out of the way and make sure that you're not pinching any fabric to make sure that's a nice clean corner. Again, I'm coming right to the corner where the pin goes down and then back stitching. Okay. So now you can see how nice and crisp that corner is that we just sewed. Now, here's where it gets a little bit more confusing. So you can see that this is not going to turn around this corner because of this interior corner. So we are going to flip this around and we're going to clip this edge all the way to that corner. And that allows us to turn this edge basically just doing the reverse of what we just did. It's a little harder just because this fabric is a little bit thicker. So you really wanna make sure you get all of that excess out of the way. So that's what that looks like now in that corner. So those both turned out really super well. I didn't get any sort of like little fold or crease there. What does happen is because this is now slit in the back, it's not quite as structurally sound. So you can easily fix that by just adding a little piece of um, fusible interfacing to the back of that just to kind of close that up and then you could zigzag over the top of it and that should alleviate that issue. Okay, so I am gonna go ahead and go to the iron and actually press all of this flat so I can see exactly where the edge of the white ends onto the red. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Okay, so here we are pressed. You can see that my corners are looking really nice. And then you can see how much of the, the red overlaps the back of the white, and that's going to end up being the back of our binding. So for this outside corner, here's where we need to do a little trick. So the outside corner is not that big of a deal. We're gonna end up doing a little mitered corner 
finagling that into a corner like that. What ends up happening here though, on this inside corner, is that there's not enough fabric here, obviously, to make this turn, right? So we need to slice into this corner and we need to add a little triangle of fabric so that we can make another mitered corner going into here. And I should say that I did end up adding in a little piece of fusible interfacing here to repair that slit that I had to make when I turned that corner there. So in order to uh, make sure that it doesn't slice more than I want it to, I'm actually going to stitch a little guideline here. So I'm gonna draw with a pencil or some sort of marking tool, continuing that line from the corner of here to the corner of here, just so I can see where that is. And then I'm gonna stitch really close to the edge on either side of that ending before, just before I get to this corner so that I have a little bit of a guide to slice open. Okay, so there's that and that gives me just a little guide and also keeps me from slicing too far and also protects the fabric from um, protects the fabric from uh, tearing further along that line. So now we can see that that allows that allows my binding to split open. So now we need to add in basically a right triangle into that section to fill in the fabric. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this and cut it down later. Remember you need to add enough to have some seam allowance. basically it's being stitched on like so and because of how you you've cut this slit you can open this binding up almost to a straight edge and you can just do one continuous stitch right across the bottom there so this is a little tricky to do and of course with a non-white thread it would be more successful it would also be smart to do this before you uh, added in that little, actually much easier. I should have waited to do that. And you're gonna be stitching this at the smallest seam allowance that you can. So, Try for like a scant eighth of an inch seam allowance. When you get to your corner, try to shift all this excess fabric away from under your needle if you can, and then just continue to the other side. And then you can see if you were successful or not. So obviously with the red thread, you wouldn't see that little corner there. But now, you can see that I have enough fabric to turn that corner and it lays flat on the other side. And in a red thread, we wouldn't see that little bit of stitching that's poking through our corner. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to the iron and I am going to press my binding over my white edge and then I'm going to carefully turn down my seam allowance and I'm going to put a pin through from the front edge catching the folded edge on the back. So I'm catching the folded edge on the back 
right through the seam on the front so that it holds that fold in place. And when we get to our miters, I'd recommend pinning on both sides as far as you can. And then it's a matter of finagling your edges in so that they look pretty. And the same thing in the corner. This actually ends up being flat. I can trim away this extra little bit here that I have and then just fold under so that I get a nice crisp point at the back edge as well as the front. Okay, so here is our binding all pinned, ready to go. We've pinned from the front because we're gonna be stitching in the ditch and that means that we're gonna be stitching right along this seam line in the ditch of that seam line. And the idea is that you're just gonna catch the very edge of your back fold, securing the binding. And you can see we've turned down our little triangle piece that we added in and we pinned in a little mitered corner here. And I'll link a little, um, I'll link a video to someone making a beautiful mitered corner. I'm not super good at it and more, lots of people have covered that topic much better than I will. But we are ready to stitch. So again, you would want to use a red stitch color, stitch color, uh, red thread color on this because otherwise you, as you will see, will see a contrasting color. So if it's red and you're gonna stitch in the ditch, it'll blend in with our red edge here and also won't show as much on the back when we're catching that fold. Okay, so then the last step is going to be checking the back and making sure that you caught all of your edges. Sometimes you can see here, if you didn't have the fold of the binding pushed quite far up or no far enough over, you won't quite catch that edge, but you can always go back and uh, restitch that edge. But I caught the edge of my miter, which is good. That's usually the part that you have a little bit of problem with and the rest of this looks okay. So again, you can see that if this was in a red thread, it would look much cleaner. And um, I would also recommend leaving yourself a little bit more seam allowance than I left myself. A quarter of an inch really wasn't enough. But, uh, three eighths would have been much more, much more comfortable. And then I would have had more to turn under. I was kind of hard to finagle this and I missed a little edge there too. But you, again, you can see from the front, except for this corner where I got a little bit off my mark. You can't see any of that and it looks really nice and clean. Okay, that is gonna do it for us. Um, I hope that this is gonna help you in the future. I would love to hear in the comments what you think you might use this for. Um, it's really super satisfying to do. There's nothing better than having just like a clean, a queen, a clean, queen, crisp line. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Ding. Mm -hmm. Today we are going to talk about binding.